All right, I hope you had time to tell your story and to think about that. And I hope it was a joyful time. I saw a lot of people talking very excitedly about your story. When you had, the, I don't want to do it. You're talking like crazy, and that's good and wonderful. I hope you enjoyed sharing your story with the people here. Uh, Brother Jim, if you come up, and I want you to close this session. Thank you, Brother Maybe you are here today, and as we began to tell our story, you thought to yourself, I don't know if I have a story. It would be horrible if you came here this weekend without Jesus Christ and you left the same. Yes. And we don't want to see that happen. Amen. I love one of the statements that Ted Camp, that he says often, and I've heard him say it so many times, we want to meet you in heaven. And uh, really, that's, that's our heart. And, and that's really the motivation of what we're doing. And so I want to just take a moment and, and explain to you how you can have your own story. I remember I was in Florida, and I had, I had given uh, the gospel, talked about the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. There was a woman there whose son was deaf. And every year she would come to the meeting. She, she was not a part of that church, but... She would come, and every year she would tell me, I lead the choir in my, my home church. And she was very, uh, you know, she was really felt good about that. And, uh, but she'd come every year, and I wasn't sure. I knew her, her son, her deaf son, was saved because I had talked with him. But uh, she, I had never talked with her. And, and uh, I, had, I had explained everything about the gospel and gave an invitation. And uh, some people had come, but not that woman. And... So we went over to lunch and we ate together and we finished and I noticed her kind of kind of hanging around. She was kind of loitering. She came up to me and she said, she said, you know, that question you asked us before in there, if we were 100 percent sure if we died, would we go to heaven? She said, how is 95 <laughs> percent? And I looked at her and I said, if, if you are willing to gamble forever on that 5%, it's fine. But I wouldn't risk it. She said, I don't want to risk it either. I want to make sure. And maybe that's you here today. Maybe you came here and you say, well, I'm from a church. Listen, this lady was the leader of her choir in her church. And she was involved and she loved her church. But that church cannot forgive sins. Amen. And I don't care. I, I love our church right here. But I promise you, this church cannot save you. It cannot forgive those sins. Our sin debt is our major problem. For me, the flowers, God used the flowers to help me understand my sin. And you know yourselves that there is none righteous. No, not one. Not you. There's no person here, including me, that's righteous. And we need a Savior. Now, listen, it would be horrible because... God has done all God could do to forgive your sins. He cannot do more. He cannot. He's done everything He can. He sent His only begotten Son to die there on the cross in your place. Jesus Christ paid off your sin debt when He died. He cried out, it is finished. He breathed and died Romans chapter 3 verse, or I'm sorry, chapter 6 verse 23 says the wages of our sin, I like to sign it, the wages of our sin or the, the wages of our sin is death. And Jesus paid it. And now Jesus died in your place. And now the responsibility is no longer God's. God can say no more responsibility. I've done everything I can. I provided Jesus Christ. He died for people. But Jesus went a little further and He rose from the grave. He paid off. He offers for you a free gift. Uh, many people think, well, what do I have to do to, what do I have to, do to, uh, to pay, to go to church, to, to join baptism, communion? Blah, 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 blah. And God said, it's, it's done. It's finished. There's no more that can be added. You just need to accept. So I want to challenge you here today. Maybe your story you made up as you listen to other people, but you don't have for yourself. And by the way, you know that before God. 
I ask you the question I asked down there in Florida that I've asked everywhere I go, if you were to die right now, are you 100% sure that you would go to heaven? That woman, in all honesty, she thought 95, 95% is pretty good. It's not good enough. I don't want to hope that I'm going to touch heaven. I want to know that I will touch heaven. You know, and the devil has used religion to tell us we cannot know. But the Bible says we can. Here's what the Bible says. First, first John chapter 5, verse 12. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. These things, verse 13, these things are written to them who believe on the name of the Son of God, Jesus, that ye may know, not but know that ye have eternal life. If you're here this, this afternoon... And you have never received Christ for yourself. Deaf or hearing, it doesn't matter to God. Amen. Child or adult, it doesn't matter to God. Man or woman, it doesn't matter to God. God said, I'm offering to whosoever will. And that can be you. Amen. God has done all he can. The question really for today is have you done what you can and should Amen. To receive Christ. I want to give you that opportunity. Let's pray together. While we're in that attitude of prayer. Hearing you can have your heads bowed. Deaf I don't want you to shut your eyes. Keep watching. If you're here today I want to ask you that question. All right, Be honest with God. By the way you can lie to me. And I'll believe you. I'm easily fooled. But you cannot fool God. Amen. So I want you to be honest with God. If you're here today and answer the question, if you died right now, are you 100% sure that you will go to heaven? Think about that. If you say anything other than, yes, I know I'm going and I have a Bible reason for that. Mm -hmm. If you say, how is 95%? I want you to think about making it 100%. God gave us his son to die in the place that we deserve. For our sin. And he offers us forgiveness. The righteousness of God in its place. But you must receive it. It's like any other gift that's been offered you. It's already paid for. But your requirement is to receive it for yourself. If you're here today and you say, Jim, I'm not sure, but I want to make sure today. Why don't you pray a simple prayer with me right now. Say, dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that my sin separates me from you. I know I'm, I'm short. I'm not fully perfect and I need you. I believe that you, Jesus Christ, came from heaven here to the earth and you live perfect without sin, holy, righteous, and pure like God. And I believe that you died in the place that I deserve. And today I understand you are the only pure, perfect, and holy payment for my sin that God will accept. Today, by faith, I will trust your death, burial, and resurrection as payment for my sin. Today, I receive the free gift that you offer me. I will take it for myself. I will trust Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone for the payment for my sin. Now I don't want anybody looking around. But if you prayed with me just now. And you were really serious with God. You say Jim that's the first time. But I prayed today. And I know now 100%. If I die I'm going to touch heaven. How many of you would say that's me. I prayed with you right now. Would you just raise your hand real quickly. Anybody like that. I prayed with you and I really meant it. Alright anybody else. I prayed with you and I really meant it. Are there any others? Heavenly Father, thank you for the gospel. Thank you. It's easy enough for a six-year-old boy to understand and become saved. Thank you. It's easy for deaf, hearing, any person who understands to be able to receive. Help us now to accept responsibility that we talked about last night. And to go around and ask people, understandest thou the word of God? Do you understand what the gospel is and help us to explain it 
as we've seen it explained clearly today here. Help us to remember this workshop, if we forget all the other things, help us to remember this, for this is eternal. Thank you, God, for giving us your son. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.